the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. A satanic revival is happening. Know your Bible for yourself or false teachers will lead you astray. The three enemies a Christian faces are the world, the flesh, and the devil. And unfortunately, all these three enemies have infiltrated quote-unquote churches. There are still plenty of fundamentally sound Christian churches. However, there is a growing number of churches that are led by the world, the flesh, and the devil. And these churches are not led by the Bible and the Spirit of God. The cold hard truth is that there is a satanic revival occurring. The world is changing. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times some will turn away from true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. As recently as 50 years ago, over 80% of our nation would identify as Christians. And over the last few years, this number is decreasing at a tremendous rate. We are now living in a godless society. Now firstly, as Christians, we need to clearly distinguish the difference between the flesh at work and Satan at work. The reason being is that once we make this clear distinction between the flesh at work and Satan at work, you will quickly be able to look at the world you live in and see the satanic revival at work. People see an individual walking down the street drunk out of his mind and they say the devil has got him. No, that's not true. Drunkenness is because of the flesh. It is the flesh that makes a person fornicate. It is the flesh that makes a man commit adultery. It is the flesh that makes a woman lust. It is the flesh that lures a person into uncleanliness. Strictly speaking, the Bible says the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries. You don't need the devil or a demon to commit any of these things. It is the works of the flesh. Satan and his demons operate on another level. They operate on a much more subtle level. Satan operates on a spiritual level. There are Christians who are being taken in by Satan and they don't know it. Now, I want to look at the approach of Satan to the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4 verses 5 through 7. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. The devil used the phrase, quote, For it is written. Jesus had used the same phrase to rebuke the devil, and his first temptation. Now what is interesting here is that we get an insight into Satan and his mind and his behavior and his cunningness. We see that the devil actually knows the Bible and not only does he know it, he can twist it and is an expert at quoting it out of its context to suit his evil agenda. Forerunner commentary expands on Matthew chapter 4 verse 5 in great detail and states the following. The theme here is protection. Satan quotes from Psalm 91, verse 11 through 12, which has the same theme. He is quoting back to Jesus the very words that he had inspired, but he does it without quoting the entirety of the two verses. He leaves out one phrase, quote, in all your ways. Jesus immediately replies, showing him that he had misapplied it. God does not guarantee he will protect us, quote, in all our ways. Will Jesus protect us in our rebellion? Will he protect us if we are downright foolish? God certainly expects us to do things involving faith in him, which the unconverted may consider to be foolish or dangerous. But willfully exposing ourselves to any danger, presuming that God is going to protect us, is tempting him. Man has no right to dictate to God what he should do. It would be like crossing a highway with your eyes closed and praying that God protects you. Matthew chapter 4 verses 5 through 7 reveals to us the nature of Satan. He twists scripture. He misapplies scripture. He leaves sections out of scripture in order to suit his agenda. 
And that is what is happening in churches. There are doctrines of devils being preached. There are people who are twisting scriptures to fit their own desires. A perfect example is there is a trend of churches that encourages their congregation to give. And that is perfectly fine and good to support ministries. But specifically, there are some churches who go as far as encouraging their members to take out loans in order for them to give more to the church. Nowhere in your Bible does the Lord encourage you to go into debt in order to give. You are not meant to get into debt in the name of faith. Another perfect example of the devil infiltrating the church is through doctrines of devils. We are seeing more and more churches and people plastering Christian at the end or front of something in order to make something quote unquote Christian. There are churches who endorse yoga and have Christian yoga groups. I encourage you to do some research and look into the history and roots of yoga and you will quickly come to find that its roots are not in Christianity. There is something called Christian tarot cards. The main use of tarot cards is for divination purposes. And we all know divination is something forbidden by the Lord our God. Christian maturity is to understand that just because someone puts the word Christian at the front or end of something does not indeed mean it is Christian. Just because an individual quotes a Bible verse here and there does not mean they are filled with the Holy Spirit. We have literally just read an example of Satan himself quoting the Bible. That means his demons and his army can quote scripture. This shows us that because something is presented as Christian does not necessarily mean it is Christian. And millions of Christians are unknowingly following doctrines of devils. I have said this multiple times. The worst thing about deception is that the people who are being deceived don't know they are being deceived. Taking a passage out of context has led many astray. People think that, quote, sincerity is the all-important principle for determining whether something is true. The truth is, quote, sincerity has nothing to do with the truth. A person can be sincerely wrong. This is a serious mistake because biblically, there is no inherent value in sincerity for determining truth. Truth is truth, and error is error. False doctrine is false doctrine, regardless of how sincere people are. A person can be, quote, sincere and still go to hell. A person can be sincere and still be following a doctrine of devils. The devil does not play fair. You need to equip yourself with the Word of God. In this age of great deception, your number one asset for protection against deception is the Word of God. Why is the Word of God so important? It has the final authority. The Bible is God revealed to us. It is God's wisdom given to help us navigate through life, and it contains everything we need to live a complete life. If we want to know what God's will is, we should look into His Word and see what it says. The Bible is the scale or meter by which we judge all things. If we lack the knowledge of God's Word, it becomes impossible for us to judge the things we hear. No matter how exciting, popular, or logical a teaching may appear, if it negates the Word and is inconsistent with the Scriptures, it is invalid. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Everything we need to know is packaged in the Bible. If we choose to be lazy Christians who fail to study, we will be oblivious to the truth and false teachers will ride on our ignorance. The Bible will help you make sound judgment. One of the best things you can do for yourself as a Christian is to make the Bible your companion, your living manual, your guide. You must become a student of the Word if you want to establish yourself in the truth. Until you study the Bible, you cannot differentiate between right and wrong. Knowledge comes when you seek it. Paul admonishes us to give ourselves wholly to the Word. Quote, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. A Christian is a student of the Word all his or her life. He or she must keep studying the Bible to gain accurate knowledge of what it says. This is how we shield ourselves from the false teachings creeping through the earth and some churches. This is how we shield ourselves from the satanic revival that is happening. As God's children, our Father's Word is our final authority. The Word of God is the final authority, not a man or ministry, the Word of God. 
We must be full of the Word and be able to put everything we hear to the test using the Bible as the parameter. Also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.